Your first knitting project should be a quick win, something you can finish in an afternoon so knitting doesn't feel like a treadmill of stitches. A headband like this one is perfect. It knits up in a couple of hours, lets you practice two basic knit stitches, and uses yarn that's soft and really fun to squish. Don't be sucked into a tutorial or a pattern that'll take you more than an afternoon to finish, not yet at least. You need something quick and easy at first, and that's exactly why you're in the right place. Before you can start knitting, you need some kind of yarn, right? I love Peyton's Alpaca Blend for this headband because the texture is to die for, really, plus the color options are really pretty. If you want to use something else, though, make sure it's a number 5 bulky weight yarn. Anything else will turn out too big or too small. Additionally, you'll need a US 10 16 inch circular needle to finish this project. All right, every new project starts with a cast on and for this one, we'll use the simple long tail cast on. So get yourself a nice long tail, a few yards should do the trick and gather it in your hands like this. Steady the yarn with your finger and swing the needle down to catch the loop on your thumb. Swing it up to catch the loop on your finger and release the thumb loop over the tip of the needle. Then wiggle it a little bit to tighten the loop on the needle. Do this until you can count 72 loops on the needle for the adult size headband. Speaking of that and the pattern, it's a really good idea to have a look at that while you follow along. You'll find other size options if you don't wanna make the adult size, but it'll also give you an idea of what a knitting pattern looks like. Look in the description for a link to see the pattern for free on my website, or if you prefer to have a PDF in hand, you can grab that from my shop, whichever you prefer. When you have all your stitches cast on, make sure the braid is along the inside and not twisted. Since we'll be working around and around, we'll put a marker here so we know that the next stitch after it is the first stitch of the next round. All right, insert the needle in the first stitch like this. Then wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through. That's a knit stitch. Then do that once more. Next, pull the yarn in front of the needle like this and insert it through the stitch like this. Wrap the yarn again and pull through. That's a purl stitch. And those are the two basic stitches in knitting. Now pull the yarn to the back of the needle again and knit the next two stitches. Then pull the yarn forward and purl the next stitch. Here's something to remember. When you want to knit a stitch, the yarn needs to be at the back of the needle. But when you want to purl a stitch, the yarn needs to be at the front of the needle. Continuing with your two knits and one purl starts the foundation for the two by one rib to this headband, or in other words, two knits, one purl. At the end of the round, you should end by finishing a purl stitch. Then pass the marker over and continue in the same way. Knit two, purl one. This simple repeat is as complicated as this pattern gets, but there's one crucial piece of information you really need to be successful. Well, two actually. First, you need to be able to recognize what a knit and a purl stitch looks like on your needle. When you see a stitch like this, that looks like there's a little V directly below the needle, that's a knit stitch. And when you see a horizontal bar along the needle like this one, that's a purl stitch. For the entirety of this pattern, you'll knit the knits and purl the purls. Another essential skill you really need as a knitter is knowing how to add new yarn to your project. When you have nine rounds in your first color, you're ready to make the switch. Loop over the new yarn, leaving a nice long tail. Insert the needle to start the knit stitch. Place the new color loop on the needle and pull it through. So that'll finish the stitch, and you wanna work a few more too. Then 
then trim the old color and tie the two ends together. For this pattern, we work another nine rounds with this new color. And as you're working through that, there's a real chance that you may knit when you're supposed to purl or purl when you're supposed to knit. And knowing how to undo that stitch is another crucial skill for a knitter. We sometimes call this tinking. To undo a knit stitch or to tink, insert the needle right here and let the loop slide off. To undo a purl stitch, insert the needle here and let the loop slide off. When you have those nine rounds in the second color, the next step is to bind it off your needles to close off these live stitches and safely remove them from the needles. We're keeping with our same stitch pattern here, so knit the first two stitches. And then pull the first loop over the last. Our next stitch is a purl, so we'll purl the next stitch and pull the first loop over the last. So the name of the game is to work the next stitch in the pattern, knit or purl, based on how you are already knitting the pattern, but then passing the first loop over the last. Use a yarn needle to clean up the start and finish by weaving in the tail. Now you can officially call yourself a knitter. Don't forget a link to the pattern can be found in the description as well as a pinned comment. And check out this video to keep your knitting streak going. Happy knitting and I'll see you in the next one.